Welcome along to Trip Notes. It's a New Zealand Herald travel podcast brought to you by House of Travel. Better together. Let's say hi to New Zealand Herald travel editor. Yeah, hi. Formerly deputy, now editor. <laughs> I know, I've had a promotion. How yeah. exciting. Congratulations, by <laughs> the you. way. That's yeah. awesome. Stephanie Holmes. Yeah, thank you. And the person sitting next to you, one of the most prominent broadcasters in New Zealand, TV, <laughs> radio, Take it. Just okay, okay, whatever. host yeah, of yeah. Q&A, yeah. also a host on Newstalk ZB on Saturday mornings, and you've been to every single continent. Jack Tame. Hi, guys. Hi, nice Hi. to have you here. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Very excited to talk to you about travel because, yes, as Tim says, you are a show off and you've been to every single continent. Well, Tim and brought that up, not me. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, and I haven't been to Sub Saharan Africa. So I've been to Africa, but not Sub Saharan Africa. Look, okay. it's so, claim I mean, it. There, well, <laughs> yeah. I will claim it, but there will be people who say, come on. I claim Tahiti and I was just in transit. So, yeah. oh, look. Oh, <laughs> well, you cannot claim. No, 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 no. You cannot claem in transit. No. That we, never and we've talked yeah. about this before. Oh, no. okay. We've told yeah, him this before. He's Forgive just me. trying it on. Yeah. Forgive me. It was, it was when I'd been to like 18 countries and I was wishing it was more. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm adding Tahiti to the list. I caught a train through Slovakia once and I couldn't, because of the, the timeline that it was on, I couldn't get off the train. So I just stood pinned to the window of this entire train, but I never claimed Slovakia. Oh, you no, claim I claim it. No, no, no. I claim Slovenia. No, no, no. You have to have set foot in the ground. Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, oh, at least. Yeah. In yeah. the country. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's good. And now, now you've got, you know, more to achieve. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Another reason to go. So we're going to find out about some of your favourite adventures from the places you've been. Uh, you lived in New York for many years and, and you were the TVNZ foreign correspondent there, so we want to get some of those yarns. Also, for the travel bug section, we're going to look at trying to do too much on holiday, something mm. I'm always guilty of, and I can't learn the lesson, just packing too much in. So we'll get some of the yarns uh, from all of us on that one. And then at the end, rather than just one destination of the week, uh, we're going to look at some of the hot destinations for next year. And we've chosen USA, we've got Croatia, Sri Lanka, Egypt, Japan, and Greece. It's so that's a big list. That, that's to yeah. come. Yeah. But let's let's delve into the past of Jack Tame. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because so my dream, and I don't know whether I've just watched too much Friends and Sex in the City, but my dream is to one day live in New York. You've done it. What was it like? <laughs> oh yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. I I I, um, I remember traveling to New York on holiday when I just finished university. So me and a couple of university mates were like, you know what, we should we should go on a trip to the States. And so we did the whole, you know, LA, San Fran, uh, Vegas, New York trip. And um, setting foot in New York, I just... I was I was just kind of intoxicated by the by how cosmopolitan it felt. I I think more so than any other place on earth, New York feels like it's the center of earth, the center of the earth. You know that what do they say about Times Square that it's the the crossroads of the world. Um and for me that was the real attraction. I loved the fact that uh it felt like New York was was the play it was kind of like the world's food court, you know? It felt it felt like there were people from every country on earth all in this relatively condensed space and for me that was just the most exciting thing so living there was amazing i mean it's not like friends <laughs> unless <laughs> unless you have millions of dollars um well you know, when you first moved there you moved into tim wilson's old oh. apartment in spanish harlem and i i hear it was a shoebox i mean it wasn't just a shoebox it was like a crack den <laughs> and I, I mean like i so i lived in spanish of I lived tim in, wilson well or? it was it wasn't fit for human habitation really um it was dire like i remember my first winter i i, I lived for one year in that apartment and, you know, because when I moved to New York, I didn't know how much money I was going to be making. I didn't know if I'd be able to make rent and all that sort of thing. I sort of had various financial stresses. So I lived in what was a relatively cheap apartment because I was working strange hours, you know, trying to um, report back to New Zealand. And so, yeah, I went for I went for Spanish Harlem, Second Avenue, which for people who know, know New York, it's the first downtown Ave in Manhattan which means that all of the trucks <laughs> coming into Manhattan to you know from from north of the city or indeed many of the trucks from New Jersey that have come across the George Washington Bridge the busiest bridge in the world they all come down second ave right and they don't care for speed limits. They don't care for anything like that. And so, whereas most of the city would get relatively, you know, would be would be relatively chill. The side streets are okay. Second Ave is basically the loudest, the single loudest street you could get in the whole city. And the first three nights I was there, 
I just I just couldn't sleep. And I just thought, oh my God, this is I've signed up to a year's lease. This is gonna be a nightmare. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's just so noisy. But then my body just kind of adapted to yeah. uh, you know to, to constant noise, sirens, gunshots, whatever. <laughs> um so I had a year there. I remember the first winter, you know, I had like 30 days where there wasn't heating or hot water or whatever. <laughs> so everyone there has this really glamorous picture of New yeah. York. It wasn't it wasn't like that at all. What was Tim Wilson doing? I, it was dire. <laughs> I mean, it was I think Tim was attracted to the like struggling New York writer <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know, romance or whatever, but I, I wasn't. So I, I had a year in that apartment and then fortunately I moved. I stayed within that neighborhood though because yeah. I loved the neighborhood and um it's not a neighborhood that most people would ever visit when no. they're in New York. It's in Manhattan. It's probably the roughest. It's probably the roughest neighborhood in in Manhattan. It's gentrifying, um, though, is it? I mean, I guess yeah, yeah. I mean, I was uh, the fact that I lived there for a start. In, in fact, when I when I moved to my second apartment, which I stayed in for four years, I was I was probably eighty meters from Central Park from the from the northern part of Central Park, and uh, you know when. When I moved into the street, I remember thinking like, yeah, this is so cool. I'm, you know, here I am. I'm from Christchurch and I'm living in New York and, you know. It I'm is on pretty street. cool. Uh, yeah, but I thought, you know, on, on my street, like everyone was Puerto Rican or Dominican. Right. And so most people spoke Spanish as their first language. And I thought, yeah, this is, you know, I'm, yeah, this is edgy. This is a real New York neighborhood. And then I remember I was walking down the street one day with, with my camera gear and my, um, and my tripod and I heard someone go, <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? Like, check time, check time. And it was this super thick Kiwi accent. Oh, I met this woman and she she lived a block away. And I was like, oh, here I am thinking, you know, the Kiwi's gone to New York and I'm in this neighborhood that's kind of gritty and is, you know, and hasn't gentrified yet. And there's, there's someone from Wellington oh, you know, no. who lives a block away. So maybe I'm not quite as, you know, as exotic as I think I am. What's, um obviously, this, if you're listening to this episode on the day of release, it's Christmas Eve. So yep. Merry Christmas to you all out there. Yeah. What, What's Christmas in New York like? Or did you always come home? I've never experienced a Christmas day in New York. Okay. So I've always I've always come home. For, I always came home for Christmas, but I would usually wait until about the 20th or 21st or whatever. I mean, it is it is rarely white these days. And I mean R-A-R-E-L-Y, rarely, <laughs> um, because the it's usually colder in, in February. I mean, it's cold, yeah. but it's, yeah. not, it's not that cold. But it, it is nonetheless magical and wonderful. And, and, you know, like you can go and do... Um, you know, they, they've set up these Christmas markets in a couple of locations around the city now and I used to always love going and doing that and buying tat and then um, <laughs> getting you know like hot apple cider and yeah. that sort of thing did you um, do the ice skating uh, ice skating yeah. you go to the Rockefeller Centre and go ice skating and you know they bring in this massive Christmas tree um, down Fifth Avenue every year and my apartment was just off Fifth Ave so I would I would always come out and see the um, Christmas tree. Yeah, it's. Can you imagine what a nightmare bringing in like a, a, a <laughs> seventy meter tall Christmas tree into the middle of Manhattan, and they would string that up. So it is quite. It is quite special. One thing I would note though is that there are a lot of people in the city who, like, aren't Christian. Right. So there are a lot of Jewish people in the city who mm. who would have Hanukkah around Christmas. Yeah. Um, a lot of Muslim people who wouldn't be celebrating Christmas necessarily, and so, but. It kind of adds another dimension because there are these other holidays that that are around Christmas as well. So, you know, so um, you see a lot of people celebrating Hanukkah mm. and, you know, I mean, I think there are more Jewish people in New York uh, in any city outside of Israel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there are kind of some other little elements as well. But I, I just love that time of year because it's cold, but it's not super, 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 like really unpleasant cold. It's not, it's minus not 20. shoveling the snow. No, it's not, no. It's, not, it's not minus 20 yet. You might get a little, a little bit of snow. I yeah. mean, occasionally they might get a little bit of snow on Christmas. But, um, you know, I, I really like going out and like having eggnog or, you know, going and going to a bar and having hot, alcoholic apple cider or something like that with your mates that yeah. sort of thing is really nice at that time of year yeah. as well yeah. so, so while you lived in new york how many do you know how many states you got to or how much 40 was, 40 yeah. okay yeah i've done 40 states yeah wow. and, and so, were there like like dark horse states where you're like oh my gosh this is so stunning i love this um you know what the thing the thing i guess i would say that i learned from my time in america was i just came to appreciate the immense diversity of the place because usually when we think of a country you 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 i mean all of us are guilty of stereotyping countries very quickly and the u.s is just so vast both in in culture and in geography and, and you know if you think that you know puerto rico is technically part of the united states 
Um, and so is Alaska. Mm. You think you know you can you can be you know you can be in the Arctic Circle, but then within the same country you can be on you know South Beach in in Florida. Mm. You know, like it's it's just so diverse that it's very yeah. hard to it's very hard to um, succinctly summarize America as anything but hugely diverse. I mean, there are a few um, a few states that I um, I guess I you know especially love traveling to like vermont is gorgeous if you ever have the opportunity to go up there it's right up in the north obviously so it's um you know it's it's almost i mean it's kind of as canadian as as the u.s would would ever get in fact it's only you know it's only about 45 minutes from montreal across right. the border you know you, you're effectively in canada um and you know i i love some of those some of those southern states i haven't done as much of the south as i would like but you know around louisiana and places like yeah. that are, are incredible mm. um you know th there is a lot of america that does seem somewhat same samey um <laughs> and maybe that's unfair who was it who said that uh there are three great cities in america uh, uh new york san francisco new orleans and everything else is cleveland <laughs> and I don't, I don't think that's totally fair. Maybe no, you can, add, you can add, add Chicago in there as well. Yeah. Um, Chicago. Yeah. I love I Chicago. Say, Chicago is just a, yeah. just a fabulous city. Except yeah. it was freezing when I was there. Well, yeah, that's was, it. It's yeah. like, it's, and it's windy. It's, it's, yeah. You do think with places like that, you're like, well, who, who, who's, you know, what it was like Ricky Gervais' thing? He's like, who, who settled here? Yeah. Who came here? It's, you know, the middle of winter, it's minus 20. You have 85, 90 kilometer hour wind. It's just, Let's uninhabitable set up. <laughs> who has come here and said this is a good place let's let's set yeah. up right here you but, know? but don't you love places like you know so even memphis which is which is pretty gritty mm. you know and, and does it tough in a lot of ways but like for me you know like just the history because we grow up with so much american stuff culture, right you know yeah. culture so like, like the the lorraine motel which before martin luther king was shot there yeah that was where the elite of black entertainment stayed you know it was a motel they, they yeah. weren't allowed to stay yeah. in, in the nice hotels they had to stay in a motel but so like aretha franklin would stay in the lorraine motel martin luther king stays there and, and he was he was shot he was killed, and it's yeah. now this museum and i just like like hairs on the back of the neck when i was there and and it's the most amazing profound museum of you know the history of civil rights in america but that stuff even when it's like tragic it's just it's amazing it, yeah you know, it blows my mind yeah mm. yeah i um, the thing that i was always um interested by too was just you know back to that diversity thing like the the amount that um you know like the amount that society is sometimes fragmented in these states like uh, you know you can go for example you go to seattle which is like this kind of liberal bubble it's very wealthy you know you have all that big industry the likes of microsoft and boeing and everything set up in there um and then you drive 30 k's inland and it's a mountainous region and people are super conservative <laughs> and never go to the city and just have a totally different life. Yeah. And you know that always I always found that amazing about yeah. about America that you could you could actually travel you know a, a relatively short distance and just find people who live completely different lives to you know their mates in the same state a yeah. short way away. I went to um, Oregon last year and started in Portland, which is yeah. like similar to Seattle and just yeah. you know, craft beer and beds and, you know, check shirts yeah. all over the place. <laughs> and then we bike, yeah, tra yeah, tra yeah. <laughs> traveled inland and we got to this crazy town called Pendleton. Mm. And it's still like a real cow. Like they have a massive rodeo every year, the Pendleton Roundup. And so there are people there who are um, basically cowboys and yeah. rodeo cowboys. and like, But people who... They're makers, they're artisans. So there's this guy that makes um, hand makes cowboy boots, and they're just like the most beautiful boots you've ever seen. But he, the waiting list is about eighteen months because you know he's got this How such amazing. reputation, yeah. and this guy with a cowboy hat that he, like they're they're yeah. all wearing cowboy hats and yeah. they're not doing it ironically <laughs> yeah, like yeah, they yeah, are not, in Portland. Not, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're doing it properly. But this it's is amazing a legitimate place. part of my wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's so cool. I, yeah. I, yeah, I mean it's a. Yeah, like the the uh, all I could ever say because I, I just always come back to this point because I was always asked as a correspondent, oh, what do Americans think about this? What does America think? Yeah. You know, and I'll be like, that thinks everything because yeah. it is everything. Yeah. Like it is it is as liberal as you want to get politically, as conservative as you want to get politically. It is it is as cold as hot as everything. That is the great thing about yeah. the states is it's just everything. And and those national parks like Yosemite, they're amazing. Do, yeah, no, you I've, see... you know, I've never done Yosemite. I've done the Utahs. Okay, which is oh my god. Okay, like, what are they you, like? You, I mean Utahs like it's like space 
Although I had this terrible... <laughs> like, Utah's, Utah's such an interesting and weird place. Because, I mean, you have Salt Lake City, right? Yeah. And so you have... Um, the you know, you have yeah, yeah, I mean, the home of the Mormon church. and um, But you have these, these vast, you know, desert landscapes with incredible, you know, rock formations and sculptures and all those sorts of things. Um, and, and, you you know, you I, I always love the juxtaposition of having the, the home of the Mormon church as close as it is to to Nevada and the home of sin. You know, they they neighbor each other. Um and yeah, you know, I had this I had this terrible time though. It was it was out in a state park, I think it was, um, in Utah, just do, doing some filming for a story. And as I as I drove into the park, there was like a you had to pay or, you know, ten dollars or whatever. And um, it, a classic American thing, right? You know, in New Zealand, you would never really have to pay to enter a national park or anything. In America, they love to charge you for entering state <laughs> park. Anyway, so and, and I went, and there was a sign saying, the gnats are in season, uh, no refunds offered. And I was like, what's a gnat? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what a gnat is. Is, is this K-K-N-A- G? Oh, K. Oh, K, K-N-A-T, G-N-A-T. Yeah. I can't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. Um, I'll come in. And I started filming. And... Honestly, if you if you look at the top half of your thumb, that's about how big these insects were. Oh. And they're they're flesh <laughs> eating insects. <laughs> and they would and I like stepped out of my car and I remember they just I was just swarmed. And I was trying to film through these things and I just had blood. I, I'd gone in wearing shorts because it was about thirty five degrees or whatever. Yeah. I'd gone in wearing shorts and the people I was filming were all Wearing full clothing because they, they knew <laughs> like what to expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I just had blood pouring down my legs. Wow! From it. And and it wasn't necessarily painful. It was just super 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 itchy. Um, and no I refunds. Could tolerate like twenty minutes, and I was like, "This is just like I, I cannot go on." And I remember I had drove back to um, Salt Lake City, and I was like shaking as I was going back because I was having some reaction. I'd been bitten so many times, and I got back to Salt Lake City, and it was a Sunday, and. Um, it was about 6 p.m. or something, and I was like, oh, I'll just go to the pharmacy and, you know, go and yeah. get some, find, find something that's going to, you know, um, antihistamines or whatever. And, of course, it was Salt Lake City, so every pharmacy in the whole city was closed <laughs> until Monday morning. And I oh, ended no. up spending the whole night in this kind of ice bath <laughs> trying to stop myself from having a reaction or going into a form of shock from being attacked. <laughs> wow. <with these> things. <laughs> so now when everyone was like, ah, oh, what a beautiful part of the world. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Beware the gnats. Yeah, yeah. Beware, Beware the gnats. But, you know, I'm... Um, Hopefully like, a short season for the yeah, gnats. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but I did the, you know, I did the, I went to um, the Bonneville Salt Flats there and, you know, did the, yeah. you know, went for a drive on the salt flats and all that sort of thing. I mean, it is... That's the world's fastest Indian place, Yeah, 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 Yeah. of course. Um, In Burt Munro territory. And uh, it is just otherworldly when you go to places like that. You know, it is... the. It's a it's a kind of a cliche, but the only thing you can really compare it to is is another planet because mm. it, those are landscapes that we're especially yeah. in New Zealand we're we're so unfamiliar with. Yeah, I think we'll have to get you back for like nine more episodes because yeah. we have we haven't right. even we'll covered off. Do, um, <laughs> yeah. one episode per continent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's so much we love to talk about. Before we get to the travel bug section, um, any other? I, I mean, we all get these questions of where are your mm. favorite places in the world, and it's impossible to answer. Um, but but if we <laughs> look the beyond uh-huh. the states, okay, you know. Are there, you've been in Africa, you've been across Europe, you've been in Asia. Are, are there places maybe that you want to get back to because yeah, you okay. love them so much? Yeah, I mean, so my, I'll just give you my travel ethos at the moment. So, so I, I love traveling as much as you guys do. For me, um, I would rather spend money on travel than anything else. So mm-hmm. I don't drive a nice car. I don't have um, fancy possessions or clothes or anything like that. Travel is my priority for, for spending money. Um yeah, I'm also like, like when I think I have the the climate guilt thing is starting to, <laughs> you know, is starting to affect me too. So I, you know, like I I don't, I never cook meat at home, and I think well, this is a, this is one small way that I can try and assuage some of my climate guilt, and I you know I try and offset whatever I can by buying trees and carbon granites and all that sort of thing. It's not ideal. I still I'm a hypocrite. No, um, you're fine. Do but, it. So so travel is my thing. I love it. Um, but my theory at the moment is that I will save places that are easier to travel to um, for later in my life or when I have children or something like that. So, for example, like I've not been to Rome. I have absolutely every intention of going to Rome one day, but for me, Rome is not a priority now. Yeah. I'll do Rome yeah. when I'm 60. 
So this is so why we went to the Middle moment, East. At the moment, I want to go to places that are like a little bit, a little bit more intrepid or a little bit more difficult. So, um, I love Latin America. I love Latin America, mm. um, and I've spent a lot of time in Mexico. I've spent a lot of time in South America, and uh, you know, I, I go back there whenever I have an opportunity. I try and get to South America once a year, at the very least, um, or Latin America at least uh, once a year. Um, last year, I had an amazing time traveling through uh, the Middle East, so tra traveling through like Jordan, all of Israel, the West Bank, Cyprus, and then up into Lebanon as well. So that was, I mean, that was an amazing place, and I would am desperate to go back there yeah. sometime soon. Um, Do you have the thing though that you know a lot of people, myself included, actually mm. don't want to repeat destinations because there's so much to see that you kind of don't yeah. want to. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I, I. If I'm going back to a place, uh, there would there has to be a kind of a specific reason. So, for example, I am going to go back to a place um, like in a couple of weeks in in Colombia. I'm going back to Medellin, but it's because I want to do an intensive Spanish course there. Amazing, and and I love it. Yeah, but it, but it's not it's not because I um, want to go and you know check out the museums or or the art galleries necessarily. Again, it's just a place that I I know has a really good Spanish school that I want. You're to go good to. with languages. Huh? Huh? This no, is... I'm not. I'm not. But uh, I, I, I want think to be you're better. modest. Huh? No, <laughs> I no, admire no. you. Yeah. No, no. But um, uh, yeah. So so I, I I generally wouldn't go back to places if I if I can mm. avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just quickly, you you're in the West Bank. Yeah. Like very few tourists, very few Kiwis would have done that. There are a few tourists, yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you give us a sense of what that was like? I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I, that whole, that whole, I mean, both, you know, I know people will come and, I, I, I'm always attracted, I'm less attracted to, um, to sites than I am by, by places of kind of, um, geopolitical interest, <laughs> uh, you know, of geopolitical interest. So, so, um, you know, I I love traveling through both Israel and and going through Ramallah, going through um, you know Nablus on the on the West Bank is is an amazing place. Hebron, these are these are places with in incredibly rich history, but also you know the center of many tensions in the Middle East as well. And I just I, I try and go over there with as open a mind as possible to to learn about the issues from both sides and um, try and inform myself. And, you know, it is so complex over there. But that part of the world is irresistible for a few reasons. If you remove politics, I mean, the the first of all, the history is incredible. Mm -hmm. But um, the food is amazing. And so much of my travel revolves around Same. eating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I basically foodie. every yeah. episode I just talk about food. It's yeah. just become this big yeah. cliche. Yeah. But yeah, well, what's, what's the food like? What, what's... Uh, so I've been to Israel, but yeah. I was a guest of the Israeli embassy, so we didn't yeah. go to the West Bank or Palestine. I mean, the food, but the, the food, food in was Israel so is better than, good. better than on the West Bank. Right. Okay. And, yeah. and, but mainly because I'm sure because they have better access to yeah. different yeah. ingredients and probably The produce and, you know, like you've got just... Pom fresh pom pomegranates mm. everywhere yeah. and just oh the main just hummus and labna and oh it's yeah it's beautiful making yeah. myself I hungry. mean but the, some of those are, so, some of those like they're, they're it's actually primal food you know like the, if you think that that's such a so much of civilization has revolved around that part of the world for so long that um they've kind of enjoyed the 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 riches of various trade routes and um in a sense, you know, even though I said New York is the center of the world, in a sense, Jerusalem is kind of the center of the mm. world, and that mm. you know that is that is such an important. You know that 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 Middle Eastern area between Jerusalem and and Istanbul, maybe, um, you know, so many different cultures have passed through those areas over the years. That um, the f yeah, you know, those those like simple meals like bread and hummus with garlic, uh, you, you, it's very hard to to do better than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and. Um, yeah, no, it's a, I, 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 it's funny. I, I, I sometimes think, what areas am I? Do I crave? Like, what you know? What areas do I really want to return to? And, um, you know, there are there are many places I have enjoyed, but I don't crave returning to them. Mm. And, um, but that certainly that part of the Middle East and India and Latin America would be probably the three things that I often crave. Yeah. 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 Why India? Just I get, I get like the diversity again. Yeah. I mean, and, and and you know, it's such, it's such an intense, um, yeah, 
kind of visceral place, right? It's it's a real assault on yeah. your. You can never be bored, can you? You can never be bored, <laughs> but it's a real assault on like it's a on your senses. Yeah. You know, you um, it's intense. It's not at all relaxing. You Where know, unless in you India? find. Did you go? I've been through. I mean, I've done the kind of the Rajasthan. Um, Route, the Rajasthan Delhi Agro route, so going as far west as Jaisalmer, and then um, and then making my way back. But I had this kind of lovely, um, it, there was this kind of lovely transition in my time in India. So I went over there first of all to work for the Commonwealth Games, whenever that was, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and um, we were they were terribly organised. They were in Delhi, <laughs> terribly organised. But uh, <laughs> but the New Zealand media was so concerned about security that um. We were set up in the the fanciest hotel I've ever stayed in in my life, <laughs> and you know I had a private driver, and it was all you know. If we were sort of you know living high on the hog for for a wee while there, um, and then all my colleagues left to go back to New Zealand. I checked out of the five star hotel, and the last place my driver took me was to the central rail station in Delhi, where I had you know like a fifth class <laughs> ticket on this train, the 16 hour train, a thousand k's or whatever it was to Jaisalmer. And I went from this fancy, fancy hotel into the train carriage where, you know, you, you can kind of curl up in the fetal position and try and sleep, but there is a chicken <laughs> in, this, in, the, in the thing with you and there are eight kids and they're all screaming and there's a hole in the ground if you need to go to the toilet. You know, it's that kind of situation. Yeah. And I just, I loved that. It was, and it was the first time I've ever traveled alone. Right, and um, was was through India, and so I went for maybe four weeks by myself, and just, I just, yeah, I loved it. So mm. I'm going to go back there as well. Actually, yeah, yeah that that first time as a young man that I discovered that in so much of the world that toilets on trains were were mm. just a hole mm. onto the track. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, again probably yeah easier to do. Now, <laughs> with the with the invention of hand sanitizer as well. Yeah, exactly. no, I, yeah, I love that part of the world. Yeah. Oh, well, let, let's do the travel bug section um, yeah. before we get to a couple more destinations. So, trying to do too much on holidays, Steph. What do you like with that? Yeah, that um, issue. Um, uh, well, I, I can go both ways. So, yeah, I, I do love a just lie by a beach and read a book holiday, but then I do suffer from terrible FOMO just in general, and so. Yeah, when a, a holiday, I know there's or something I should be doing if I'm yeah. doing that. So yeah, I, I, I do have times when I've just tried to pack too much in, and I think we've talked about it before in terms of food. Like I always think there's something better that I should be doing. Where where else should I be? <laughs> so yeah, I do I do suffer from that. But mm. do you, Jack? Uh, yeah, I mean I've I, I mean I would never choose to do a beach holiday. Okay. Um, but you know if people are into that, it's totally fine. I think I've done one kind of one. Um, when I went to the Dominican Republic, but I I agreed that if we were going to stay in a resort for three days, then we had to go back into Santo Domingo and like do our own thing and stay somewhere kind of grittier and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but in terms of packing stuff in, I've definitely m- matured on that front to the point where I think it's so much better to do stuff well than to rush through a lot of yeah. things. So um, I think the, the first time I even went to Europe, I did some ridiculous trip where it was like, <laughs> you know, like two nights in Berlin, two nights in Amsterdam, two nights in Barcelona, kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Almost like a contiki, but <laughs> off our own backs. And I would never do something like that. But now. it's hard, right? Because, you know, we, we live it so is. far away that wherever you travel and it takes so long to I get know, there. And, you know, know, if you're working and you've only got a couple of weeks off, it's like you, balance, you really so. want to, you know, yeah, see as much as you can yeah. and make the most of your money. But then you end up coming back exhausted and needing a holiday I, from I your holiday. Get, I often get sick when I get yeah. back from holidays because yeah. I haven't, like, done any real relaxing. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, get, I get, like, cross with myself. You know, my wife and I had a day in Sri Lanka where we did, like, 15 different things. And part of it was because the, the driver just wanted we said look we want to go see this beach and if there's some nice things on the way then we can stop off on the way so that sounds like that's going to be a fun day but we'd we had to pick up our laundry at the end of the day which was the dumbest thing ever because we had the laundry place the laundromat closed, closed. the next day <laughs> well, yes. yeah, and we, we were flying out yeah, early the exactly. next morning yeah you got the six <laughs> so, yeah yeah you know. so our, our <laughs> beach, a classic oh it's there. so dumb our beach <laughs> hopping day was the whole thing was determined by the fact we had to get back to colombo by six o'clock mm. to get our laundry because of our early flight and and then we, you know the driver's like oh they've said you know if we see some nice sites we can stop off at them so then mm. he took us to like every boring site um, <laughs> along with the amazing ones and and when we're then driving inland to see a jewelry mine 
I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, you know, it's mm. like an hour's drive inland. And we got to the amazing beach we wanted to get to, and we had like half an hour there. And the, you know, <laughs> the photos are great, and we only just made it back. It's like yeah. the laundry, and we thought, what were we doing? Yeah. Why were you what getting was... your laundry done when you were flying? Were you flying home? Yes, yeah, so we were flying home. Could but... you not have got your laundry uh, no, done I, at home? I think we had a couple of days in Malaysia on the way back, okay. and like we just no, no undies left. <laughs> the thing I think I think maybe a, a good a good way to think about it though is if you are traveling, make the travel part of the experience. Yeah. Right. And so so like a beautiful train yeah, journey. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Exactly. With a chicken. Yeah. yeah. So for, um, for example, I. I did this amazing trip a few years ago where I went to Bolivia and uh, we went to the to the south of Bolivia to the salt flats and then up into the Andes and stuff. And the easy way to do that would be to get on one of the little tours because there are no roads, there are no like there's no cell phone reception, you're in the middle of nowhere. Mm. It's just really weird. You're up in the Andes, it's five thousand meters high, you know, people have altitude sickness, all mm. that sort of thing. The easy way to do it is go online, book the back package trip that everyone else does, and these guys who do the trip twice a week will just burn you through there in a four wheel drive in, in two days or whatever. But me and my girlfriend at the time were like, hey well why don't we um, why don't we rent our own four wheel drive? Um, go and get, you know, find out how to get a massive drum of petrol, strap that to the back of the four wheel <laughs> drive, um, buy supplies for f- four or five days, do the same trip, do it over a longer period, but make that trip itself like the adventure, yeah. you know? And, and that was such a good way to do yeah. things. It was such a richer experience than if you'd been crammed in the back of the tour that everyone else was doing, you mm. know? And had laundry um, to get back to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The laundry, that's a classic problem, eh? You guys should do a whole episode on tips on for, for yeah, how to operate like foreign washing machine situations, <laughs> oh, eh? Yeah. I've had some shockers. Yeah. I, there was one in Bali where I was trying to find a cheap place to do it because they do it so expensive at the hotel. You can't yeah. do it at the hotel. Oh, yeah. I accidentally spend a hun- I spent $150 getting a shirt and a couple of pairs of undies oh, washed ones. Yeah. yeah. No. I bet they felt good though. Well, that, uh, no. Because <laughs> I, I wear sweatbands. Everyone makes fun of me for sweatbands. But oh, a hot, that's hot a whole country. other episode. Yeah. But, oh, you, know, no. you, you have your sweatband. But on the the hotel list of you know how much it costs mm. for your undies and your socks, they don't have sweatbands. And so they, they were so charging me. Like, because yeah. nobody wears yeah. them apart from you and um, tennis players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. No, look good, feel good. Um, all right. There are, there are some other destinations we just want to talk about uh, mm. looking ahead to next year. Yeah. So we've covered off the States. Uh, mentioned Sri Lanka a bit, which both both Steph I and love I it. You, love. Just you should go there full stop. That's all we need to say about Cause, Sri cause Lanka. You, it's amazing. The, the beaches, the access to national parks. You know, here uh, comes the cliche: the food. The yeah. food is great, uh, but you know, elephants in the wild, mm. extraordinary. Have you been to Sri Lanka? Been there, guys. Go, go Love next year. Love it in. No, no, do <laughs> it. Yeah. Do it. Okay, but but some other destinations. I'm um, dying to get to Japan. I've okay. never been, and um, I just I. I think I would love it. I feel like every other New Zealander went there. This I know, year. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit behind. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, it does. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's in relatively easy, right? Yeah, relatively. so easy. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm fine. really, really desperate to get there. And I, I'd love to go. I want to see more of Europe. Obviously, I grew up in the UK, but I didn't really make the most mm. of seeing Europe when I was there because I was lying by a beach and mm. <laughs> partying all night. But, um, yeah, so um, I'd love to go back to Greece and see more of the islands and nice. do some island hopping over there. And um, I think uh, Greece is one of the absolute top bucket list destinations for Kiwis, and mm. and I, you know, a lot of Kiwis, a lot of people around the world, you, you know, you're drawn to hot weather. Mm. Um, but as far as the, you know, the scenes of like Santorini and and Mykonos, but and you don't need just, to go there. There's, I mean, they're beautiful, but yeah. Santorini is so. It's one of the ones that we've talked about over tourism before, and that's one of the ones that's right. really suffering mm. from over tourism. And there are just as beautiful islands that yeah. you Don't have probably wouldn't know that you're either. not on yeah, Santorini yeah. if you're there, you know, right. so I think that's a good tip for Kiwi travellers for next year. So it doesn't have to be Santorini? No, yeah. like look for the kind of the similar destination that's, you know, up yeah. and coming or, you know, not well, quite as touristic. Indeed, that's why Croatia, which is another one of the hot destinations for next year that we wanted to mention, That one of the reasons that took off was people going, okay, Greece is amazing, um, phenomenal, but is there another country that's got some of those same attractions that maybe not so many people go to but now Croatia is so popular too yeah but but again like there's I think there's about a thousand islands in Croatia and so you don't just have to go to Dubrovnik and Split mm. where all yeah. the tourists are you can go to all kinds of different islands there and mm. sail between them the water there is just incredible so yeah that's um, yeah and Jack you've been to Egypt that's another one of the hot destinations yeah I love Egypt I, well I, yeah I see I'm really drawn to cities mm. um, yeah. uh, what's Cairo like well, I actually think Cairo is um, its one of the few cities I don't like. Really? Uh. Yeah. I just, oh, I was there like probably, I probably didn't go for a good time. I went like 
kind of after the revolution and things are a little bit hairy still and okay. tanks on the street and stuff you're a lot more so. intrepid than no, me no, no, no. So, <laughs> I mean tanks on the I street can I do like, that yeah. Yeah. Like, it was, I could stay at the Sofitel and I was like oh it's like 100 bucks a night why is that and I was like <laughs> oh okay that's right there. it's because no one's there <laughs> yeah um, no it's Egypt's one of those funny places too where you think the food should be good and it's terrible it's terrible yeah. um, pigeon but, I hear yeah, you... stuffed pigeon. They oh, love the wow. stuffed pigeon. No, but I did a couple of amazing things in Cairo. Um, like a lot of the war cemeteries and stuff are really amazing. Um, and, you know, you have all of these New Zealand links which in, in funny places in the middle of Heliopolis and places like that. You, um, you know, you can find connections to home. Um, and obviously the pyramids are amazing. Don't just go to the Giza ones, though. Go go out if you can Luxor Take, apparently has yeah, got the highest go concentration the of yeah, yeah. The Egyptian hoo-ha yeah I, yeah <laughs> Techn- Egyptian hoo-ha <laughs> the official term yeah, yeah. So have you been like down not, the Nile I've not or, done the yeah. Nile I've done yeah. like nine or ten days in uh, in the capital and then um, and, and you know you've got Alexandria up on the coast as well but uh, yeah it's a, it's quite an, like Egypt's quite an intense place eh? mm. um, and as much as I enjoyed my trip i didn't i didn't love cairo i, I thought cairo was kind of a yeah a bit of a it was a difficult place when i was there right. maybe post tank well i think it's a you know it's it's kind of it's it's very polluted yeah and i don't have a problem with pollution i mean i do but you know i i don't but as when you're traveling i'm like yeah it's sort of whatever yeah. you know but i just remember i i remember it being and, and it was sort of a place where um you know, like I was, I was quite aware of the tensions between genders and stuff like that. You know, right. um, and even going on the, you know, I, I love using public transport when I'm in a foreign place, and I remember, you know, just being surprised at how kind of um, unpleasant some of the right. some of the times on the public transport felt, how how kind of aggressive a lot of it felt um, compared to other places. And that may not have been typical. Like I say, I was there during a difficult period. Yeah. So, and I've got friends who've. Sp- who lived there for years, who love Cairo, who, who rave about it. So I think it, Egypt's probably a place where it would be a good idea to like book onto a guided tour and, you know, have yeah. someone looking after you. And, you know, it's, it is a place that so many people want to go because of the amazing architecture and, you mm, know, archaeological history. sites yeah. and history. But yeah, having someone to kind of do that hard work for you and make sure that you're looked after is a good idea. Well, I, I, in, I mean, the, some of the best things I did was, was get out of the city for, you know, a few hours to, to some of the more remote um um, pyramids and stuff and it was amazing it was when I was there there were almost no tourists in the country and so I remember pulling up and the only person at these pyramids was an armed Egyptian soldier who was like super bored and just really excited <laughs> that I was there and you could just go inside you know wow. it's not wow. like amazing. it would be <laughs> you know in New Zealand where it'd be you know stand 200 meters off and um you know, you'd have velvet ropes everywhere or anything. No, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. Just go into the sarcophagus <laughs> if you're interested. Yeah, have a look around. And so did you discover any secrets? How were the no. pyramid, pyramids built? I, mean, I, don't, no one, I don't think no we one officially knows. know yet, do we? Right. Yeah. No, I don't think we do officially know. It's it's like it's still this mystery. I mean, but it was, yeah, hugely exciting. You could just, you could crawl down into these little cavities. And I remember just being really grateful that I had enough charge on my phone <laughs> for the light because it was quite, you know, See, I just wouldn't spooky. do that. You're, 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 no, no, you're a brave I'm not. No, that, was, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah, I'd love to spend more time there. Yeah. As I say, we would love to have you back uh, for, I yeah. think, multiple, yeah, multiple episodes. No. Uh, you're one of the. I think we covered maybe two continents. There, I'm going, so to, I'm going more to Pakistan to talk next week. <gasps> what? Get out! That's my. That's my. This is the this, this summer's holiday. So. Wow. Wow. What? Tell us. Yeah, so what, while, so what, while what, every uh, while okay, every other so, Kiwi okay, is okay, lying no, on the beach. Is, so yeah, while everyone else goes to the beach or Bali or whatever. I, so this is my this is my plan now. Okay, yeah. so go go from here, Golden Bay for a, for a week, and then uh, and then. Nelson, Christchurch, Singapore, Mumbai, Mumbai for New Year, <laughs> then Mumbai to Amritsar in the north, you know, home um, home of the Sikh religion. So go yeah. to the Golden Temple, then across the border, you know, where they do the border, yeah. the the border ceremony between India and Pakistan, where they do the stamping and stomping and stuff. Cross that border into Lahore, so about five or six days in Lahore, then up to Islamabad, Rawalpindi, up into the north of Pakistan, into the mountains, although it's winter, so it's going to be freezing. Then down to Karachi in the in the south, which is like, I think probably going to be a bit of a difficult city. And then Karachi, Istanbul, Medellin, I'm this is my, my, and this is coming then. from someone who just said they've learned not to pack too much into their no, holidays. This is like two so. months. Oh, okay, all right. So, no, so, this is brilliant. I'm yeah, so keen I'm to hear about back. Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. Because because Pakistan, I think that that people may have essentially. I think most 
yeah, people I mean, have no idea about Pakistan. Yeah, mm. yeah, and you have to be a bit careful about where you go. Yeah, it's, you know, like you can't be going to the contested tribal regions or popping over the Khyber Pass into Afghanistan for the weekend yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. be, and obviously Kashmir at the moment. Well. Yeah. So you've yeah. got to be quite deliberate. But, yeah. Yeah. Are, okay, please be careful. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Look, <laughs> it's spectacular fine. mountains, you know. It's the, beautiful. Yeah, it's supposed it to be beautiful. The food stunning. is amazing. Yeah. Apparently the people are incredible. So I'm Yeah, and there it. are, you know, from what I've read, um, you know, really lovely parts of, of places like Islamabad and mm. Lahore, mm. you know, and... Not so much Karachi. No, I not so much read Karachi. Lo- yeah, Karachi's, <laughs> but apparently it's I haven't read a lot of Karachi's, but apparently it's a very um, cosmopolitan yeah. right, at the very least, yeah. Will you be posting your adventures on an Instagram page? I, or? I imagine I will get there eventually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it won't be the priority when I'm there, but, no. I, but I will, I, will I, I imagine, put it up at some point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, Jack Tame, thank you, you so much for, for being on Trip Notes. Um, that oh, was thank sensational. You. Yeah, thank you. And, and have a safe and wondrously Duh, yeah. adventurous time yeah. um, on that and, trip. And happy Christmas yes. and happy New Year to all our listeners. And yeah. Thank you for listening to us this year. Yeah, exactly. And do uh, like and subscribe and, and share Trip Notes if you've enjoyed it. And you can find uh, us all on Insty um, at Tim Roxburgh, No You, uh, Home Stephanie, That's right. and Jack yeah. Tame. Yeah, and, uh, and also check out nzherald.co.nz slash trip notes and you'll find um, content from all our other previous episodes. Yeah, and, and video content and, and everything on the uh, NZ Herald Facebook page too. That's right, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Cool. All the best, Jack. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jack. Merry Christmas.